We indeed baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, for the remission of your sins. Amen. Welcome to the Crusade for Christ, sponsored by the Churches of Christ, and coming to you from the George R. Brown Convention Center in Houston, Texas. Service beginning nightly from 7.30 p.m. to 9.30 p.m. The Dr. Jack Evans is our National Crusade Speaker for Christ. We were here in this crusade 16 years ago, here in the city of Houston, Texas. We were in another auditorium. We had hundreds of responses Many, many were baptized at that time, and some people even now are telling me that they were baptized in that crusade, which was in 1983. Here we are, 16 years later. The message is the same. The water is here, just as we had it there. Why is the water here? Because I plan to preach Jesus. And you can't preach Jesus without preaching water. There is water in the plan. And we hope that during the course of this meeting, there will be many that will go down into this liquid grave, be buried in baptism in the name of Jesus for the remission of their sins. So we are praying that there will be some today who will be the first to go down in this pool. We hope that there will be many even this day. Now Houston is my home. It is where I was baptized into Christ over at the Fifth Ward Church of Christ started preaching out at the Fidelity Church of Christ and grew up here in the city of Houston, Texas. And I'm glad to come back home and to be a part of this campaign. And just as the late brother Paul settles in this city led me to Christ over 44 years ago, I'm standing now in the pulpit where he stood at the time I received the gospel, and I'm telling you the same thing that he told me, and that is the gospel is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth. And I put it like that because if you don't believe it, then it's nothing. The Bible says, the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness. But to us that are saved, it is the power of God. You must believe the gospel. All right, this will be the focus of this meeting, that you believe what is preached. And if you believe what is preached and you haven't obeyed the gospel, you have to come through this pool. You have to come through water in order to become a child of God. The space city. And I'm going to tell you today about space, about NASA. How many of you have heard the acronym NASA? National Aeronautical Space Administration. NASA, Houston, Texas. We hear it on the launching of the spacecraft. Houston is the center. It is called Mission Control. And that's 
what we're going to deal with, mission control. Now, when we hear uh, in the space language mission control, we're talking about information and direction coming from Houston going out into the heavens talking to the astronauts but when we talk about mission control today we're talking about direction and information coming from heaven back down here to the earth and the book says forever oh God your word is settled in heaven. So what we preach starts in heaven. Mission control. I want to read something to you from the newspaper first. I got the idea of this message from just reading this article entitled Astronauts prepare for orbital link-up. Space Center Houston discoveries astronauts geared up for the first orbital link-up with the new International Space Station examining equipment and testing suits to be used during a week in space walk. The seven member crew will be the second to visit the fledging station, but the first to dock with it. The spacecraft are scheduled to rendezvous about 12.30 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time. It talks about a link-up in space. And one of the astronauts said, we have a new house out there in space, and it doesn't have much furniture or trim yet. We have a new house out there in space. And then they close out by talking about the hookup, the linkup of the spacecraft. Rummager will use to help navigate this as it links discovery with the space station out there in space. All right, NASA, does it mean national Aeronautical Space Administration this morning? No. It means new attire for the space age. New attire for the space age. Is there any Bible on that? Second Corinthians Chapter 5, beginning with verse 1, for we know, thank God I'm glad that Paul could say we know it. When they, when they launch from Cape Canaveral, they don't know what's going to happen. We've had some unfortunate incidents in space travel, as you know. Because they don't really know, oh, they make the plans and they have the computerization, but they don't know how that spacecraft is going to react. But we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God. A house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. 
For in this, in this tabernacle, we groan. We groan in this tabernacle earnestly, desiring to be clothed upon with our, look at it, we have a house. House which is from heaven. It is a house out there. If so be that being clothed, we shall not be found naked. For we that are in this tabernacle do groan being burdened, not for that we would be unclothed, but clothed upon that mortality might be swallowed up. We must, while we are in this earthly house, start preparing for that house out there in space. And God says, I'm going to give you some new clothes to put on for space travel. And we are thankful as Christians to know that all we have to do in order to get ready for space travel is to listen to mission control. And if we listen to mission control and follow the instructions, there will be no travel in space. Every direction in this space program comes from Houston. The spacecraft leaves Cape Canaveral in Florida, comes back California. But the mind behind it comes from Houston. We, as human beings, are spread throughout the world. God made us and put us here upon the earth. But he didn't leave us without instruction. He said, heaven not Houston, but heaven is mission control. If you listen to heaven, you'll be all right. You'll be all right and he'll tell you how. You notice the article says that these men were, were, were testing suits to be used out in space. They go through uh, simulations and so on and to see if it'll work out there. Well, God knows more about space than any astronaut here on this earth. God made space. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And so if he, if he made the heavens. He knows how to handle us. Therefore, we need some new attire for this house that God is going to give us. You remember the Bible says that God knows who we are. Listen, and we're, we're, we're Bible preachers. Turn over to Psalm 103, verse 13, to let you know that this old house is dissolving. And we need some new attire for the space age. In Psalm 103, and verse 13, and someone else go to Job 14 and hold it for me. All right, in Psalm 103 and verse 13, the Bible says what? Like as a father. Like as a father. Pitieth his children. 
pitieth his children. So the Lord, so the Lord pitieth them that fear pitieth him. Pitieth them that fear him. For he knoweth our frame. Get this now. He knows our frame. He remembereth that and we are he dust. He remembers that we are dust. Are dust. As for man, hold it. I'm glad God has a good memory. So when I have my problems in the flesh, he remembers that I'm just dust. Talks. And that will humble anybody. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. When you think you're so much and, and you, you know you're so high and mighty. Yeah. And you look at this verse and God pities us like we pity children mm -hmm. because he remembers, well, first of all, it says he knows our friend, our friend. Yeah. and he remembers that we are dust. Now that doesn't mean that you try to use that for everything you do wrong. <laughs> Lord, remember. <laughs> yes, God knows man. And he remembers that we are dust. What else? As for man. As for man. His days are as grass. His days are as grass. I told you we're dissolving. And I really don't have to tell you we're dissolving. You don't believe you're dissolving as a body? Get a picture of yourself of 15 years ago. <laughs> Look at it. <laughs> And then look in the mirror. Yeah. yeah. And you know that you're on your way out. And you can put on all the Grecian formula and just for men and Lady Claro. You want? You're on your way out. All of us are. But we have another house. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. This house is not made with him. Yeah. And it's not here on this earth. Because this earth will pass away. Yes, sir. And we are going out of this world. And it depends on whether or not you are ready for space travel as to whether or not you go to heaven. You have to get ready for space travel. Yes, sir. And the book says, God, knowing that we are dust, that we are dissolving, has given us a suit. A suit. He has given us a suit. As for man, his days are as grass. His days are as grass. As a flower of the field. As a flower of the field. So he flourishes. So he flourishes. For the wind passeth over the it. The wind passeth over it. And it is gone. And it is gone. And the place thereof. And the place thereof. Shall know it no more. Shall know it no more. Time changes things. Right here, I'm from Houston, and I can get lost even in Houston because I lived here 30 years ago, 35, 40 years ago, and the streets have changed. All of these interstate networks and spaghetti and macaroni. <laughs> You miss one turn, you don't know where you are, and I'm from Houston. Because time changes things, and time changes us. So we have to get ready for something else. And so Job, Job 14, 1, Job said what man? Man that's born of a woman. That is born of a woman. Is a few days. Is a few days. And full of trouble. And full of trouble. He cometh forth. Cometh forth. Like a flower. Like a flower. And he's cut down. And he's cut down. He fleeth as a shadow. He fleeth as a shadow. And continueth not. And he continueth not. I don't have to spend any much more time 
or any more time really on talking about the dissolving house because you and I know that we are dissolving. There are many other scriptures, Ecclesi Ecclesiastes 12, 1 through 7, I won't read it, but that first verse says, remember now your creator in the days of your youth while the evil days come not. Now the years draw nigh when thou shalt say I have no pleasure in them. Read Psalm 90, 1 through 12. And in verse 12, he says, Lord, teach us to number our days that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom. James said, what is your life? It is even as a vapor that appears for a little while and it vanishes away. The Hebrews writer said, in Hebrews 9 and verse 27, it is appointed unto a man once to die and after death, the judgment. Well, since we realize we are dissolving, what must we do? How do we prepare for the space age? Well, there are some preparatory clothes that God has given here on the earth. This is before we get out there in the space age. Let's go to Psalm 132 in verse 13. Someone go to Isaiah 61 10 and then Galatians 3 26 and 27. I'm going to show you we have to prepare. You have to put on not something, but you have to put on somebody. Prep. Well, did God look down the stream of time and tell us that he would get us ready for space? In Psalm 132, verse 13, the book says what? For the Lord has chosen Zion. For the Lord has chosen Zion. He has desired it. He has desired it. For his habitation. Now listen, the salvation that we're talking about right now started out in Zion. And the Lord chose Zion. 